And it'll be going to their top ruckman and forward, Peter Moore. Moore with a fine punt kick down towards the full forward zone. Dunn's there for St Kilda, tries to go around the goal. Could have been dangerous, but he's well shepherded by Dale Evans. Goes for a long hand pass to Phil Stevens. Stevens, another hurried hand pass back to Dunn in turn, back to side bottom. Side bottom. Oh, lucky there to get away with that. And the Magpies now go forward. It's kicked in towards the 10-metre square. Kinks in front as he got the mark. No, says the umpire. Play on a snapshot for goal. He's brought up four points to Davis. And first goal to Collingwood coming at the one-and-a-half-minute mark of the first quarter. Well, that was pretty quick thinking on the part of uh, Craig Davis. And uh, we saw him in action a couple of weeks ago. And uh, he kicked seven goals. And last week he had a bit of a lapse, but... Uh, Getting off to a good start, kicking three goals. But this is a, an excellent start for Davis and Collingwood. They go to one goal, six points to St Kilda yet to score. And we're at the uh, one-minute mark of this first quarter. A very important clash for both these sides. Back to the centre now. It'll be uh, side bottom against Peter Moore. Ball comes down to side bottom now with the bandages around his ankle like a trotter. He gets it back as a go for uh, Saru. He's grabbed, he's lost the ball. Umpire call play on, giving plenty of latitude, a hand pass. Coming out there wide, they're calling it's worth and playing the ball very determinedly in front of him and the ball is out of bounds. Out of bounds on the uh, St Kilda half forward line, about uh, 50 metres around from their goal. Peter Moore against uh, Big uh, Dishler that time. Kicked away by Carter, the ball comes back there, that was green I should say, and the umpire's found a free kick or is he going to ball it up? A ball up. On the St Kilda half forward line, play a bit scraggly at the moment. P plenty of tension, that's the reason why. Possibly. Duke Perusal grabs the ball, gets a quick hand pass, not a very effective one. Picked up here now by uh, White. The ball goes over now to Collingwood. We see the ball driven up there by Morris. Morris kicked off the ground that time by Tony Shaw, replacing Valley today. Out it goes, Tony Sh uh, This is picked up now by Davis, already kicked one goal. Up there looking for the full forward position. A chance there for Stewart, but he's off balance. In goes Barry Breen. He's around the boundary line. Still back and play. The ball tapped out nicely to Davis, but the umpire's found a free kick. It'll go down there. Let's see who's got the free kick. Evans. That's Evans uh, down there. Uh, Evans, is it? It's Evans down there with the free kick now for uh, St Kilda. Back out towards the wing position. Punched out by Moore. Back it goes now. Going after his Carter. He's grabbed. Pulled to the ground. The umpire said uh, holding the man. And Carter will take that free kick out towards the wing position. Kick back in towards the centre. Barker from behind. Tried one of his screamers but it's Bill Pickham the man with the front posse. Pickham now gets it over to his skipper uh, Ray Shaw. There's three Shaws on the Collingwood side today. Derek, Tony and Ray and there's a fine mark taken by Dunn showing better judgment. Dunn comes out the member stand side looking for O'Keefe. He was put off balance though by White who's uh, in the side today after being an interchange player last week against North Melbourne. Shaw tapping the ball out cleverly. The umpire says a free kick though. He was held when not in position and the Collingwood captain takes the free kick for the Magpies at right half back. Picked up well by Cunningham. Cunningham's hand pass and turn over to Bond. Bond another hand pass to Disher. Too slow. And it's uh, a free kick to Collingwood for holding the man, or holding the ball rather. This is just a little bit too slow to get rid of it. The Magpies now taken by Woolno on the wing. And Woolno, who had a quiet day last week against Morris Boys of North Melbourne, in towards the forward line. Great mark taken down there for Collingwood. And it's dragged in for them uh, by Russell Olsen, former Carlton player. Olsen now from 50 metres out. That's not a bad kick. It's got plenty of distance. It's coming in. A wait for the goal on Pirates. Full point. Beautiful kick. Russell Olsen. Well, I had to look twice before I picked him up because Olsen generally plays in uh, a sleeveless jumper, but today in the sleeves. And he brought up Collingwood's second goal. Four minutes into the first quarter. The Magpies, two straight goals. St Kilda yet to score. Magpies off to a great start. There's a young boy playing his first game for Collingwood today. That's young Dacos. Peter Dacos in the centre, number 35. <coughs> Pardon me, and it'll be worth uh, watching this kid because he's got a ton of talent. Out it goes the game, but the umpire's found a free kick. It'll go to Moore against side bottom, even though side bottom appeal for that one. St Kilda still look a little bit slow, Lou. We saw them against Essendon. They were slow in the second half, and they don't appear to have uh, improved on that performance so far. I think the Collingwood side may have grabbed them by uh, surprise at the moment. Andrew Ireland getting it up there. Rene Kink in front, knocked away by Breen. Now Kink's got it. He breaks his way through the pack, the incredible Hulk. Up it goes towards the full forward position. There's Davis, has got the mark, I would say. 
Charge for his second goal because he's only about uh, 10 or 11 metres out, dead in front. And this is uh, Collingwood getting off to a great start. And as Peter Landy said before, just about a capacity crowd here today, around about the 30 to 35,000 mark. And this crowd in perfect condition. The shot by Davis is right through the middle. And Collingwood now goes three straight goals, 18 points to St Kilda yet to score. And we're at the five minute mark of this first quarter. Here we go. It's side bottom against Moore. Moore wins out yet again. I don't think he's been beaten for a hit out. Morris, the Collingwood vice captain, looking for Davis off his hands, a chance for Dunn. He'll go to the member stand side, well shepherded by Breen. Looking out there for Cunningham. He's off balance as a result of a contact from Woolno. The hand pass is to Morris. Kevin Morris in towards full forward. High flyers needed here. Kinks there, down to Dunn. Dunn drops the ball when tackled. And it's getting pretty close to the boundary line. Stewart's hand pass is not a good one, but his teammate in uh, plenty of trouble. But it, uh, it, the umpire's given a free kick to Ray Shaw for an incorrect tackle and sure right on the boundary line he could kick a goal from there don't worry about it but uh, not a good kick it's not a very deep pocket that and uh, it will be a free kick to Phil Stevens in the left back pocket for St Kilda St Kilda kicking towards the Arrow Falls end here of the Collingwood ground and the Magpies three straight goals the Saints yet to score Stevens kick knocked away once more fisted forward by Tony Shaw out to his brother Ray Shaw but he couldn't do much with it now he can he backs up well a long hand pass but it's intercepted by Dunn Dunn a hurried hand pass uh, in turn but straight to Kevin Morris Morris fires at the goals from 35 metres out Davis from behind can't beat Barry Breen and uh, Breen the St Kilda skipper takes a fine mark the Saints in plenty of trouble in the defence at the moment Stevens and Dunn Dunn comes out from the back pocket but he's got too many opponents there Kevin Morris's hand pass is a good one over to Shaw in turn over to Stewart who fires and brings up another one to Collingwood that's their fourth by golly you can't do more than that that's four straight goals in a matter of seven minutes and the Magpies are off to a great start that's 24 points plays nil and of course St Kilda could only manage three goals for the day. However, the best was yet to come in so far as Collingwood was concerned. They started off the second quarter just as well. And let's go now once again to Victoria Park for the first few moments of the second term. Quarter and seventh big league from Victoria Park. And the Saints certainly looking for some much improved form from the first quarter. Nobody really got that out. Taken away by Dacos. Dacos over to Kink. And the incredible hop from centre half forward should be able to score from there. Lines up the goals from 40 metres out. But it's a little bit offline and puts it through for only one point. So Collingwood to 7850 and St Kilda 117. Ball being driven back into play by Barry Breen, the St Kilda skipper towards right half back. Side bottom getting booed for uh, an alleged incident in the first quarter. Ivan got connected there, but side bottom wasn't in the incident. It was uh, another St Kilda ruckman, we believe. Ivan with the free kick at the left half forward flank. It's a beautiful kick, too, covering plenty of distance. Up behind the pack and a fine mark brought down for St Kilda by Evans. Evans from the right back pocket now. Almost as good a kick as Ireland. It's getting pretty close to the boundary line. The ball knocked away by Andrew Ireland, away from side bottom. And once again we'll see a throw. And a lot of footer fans possibly uh, confusing side bottom with somebody else in the St Kilda side. Knocked down by Moore, taken away by Green. His kick back towards the centre. The wrong way for St Kilda though. Picked up by Morris. He gets offloaded. Will know, tackled by Cunningham, but too late. His kick in towards half forward. Renee Kink and Stevens doing battle. Free kick to Stevens, says the umpire, and Phil Stevens to take the free kick in the true centre half back position. Former Geelong player going towards the outer side of the ground. Will know and Cunningham. Barker pushes him in the back. Very scrambly out there. White's there for Collingwood, and the umpire has no choice but to uh, award a free kick. I thought it may have been a ball up. But it's going to be a free kick. White takes the hand pass, effective to Woolno. Woolno in turn back to Dacos, who has kick number seven for the match. Dacos in towards full forward. Stewart from behind. The ball punched away. Out towards centre half forward. Here's Ray Shaw. Lines up from 35 metres out and is offline for one point, taking the Magpies total to 7 9, 51, leading St Kilda 1 1 7. Well, I would say that St Kilda are a very lucky side because the Magpies are certainly. They're missing a lot of easy shots, and they should be about 12 goals on the board to one. There's no doubt about that by the amount of play. There's going to be a mark to Duke Perusal. I think he's paying it. And so he should. The ball back towards the centre of the ground. Well, oh, they're overrunning, but picked up by uh, Billy Pickin. A shocking kick to Collingwood players. Finally, it's uh, driven back by Morris. A ricochet job, and 
poor old side bottom's getting the raspy from the crowd, but it's not warranted. The kick's mother and the ironical cheer goes up. Picked up by Bart. He looks very lethargic as he ran after that ball that time. Oh, damn good mark there to Jeff Saru over the top of, uh, of uh, McCormick. Well judged, beautiful mark up towards the full forward zone. Magro at the back goes for the big punch. He's a real spoiler. Morris taps it out towards Shaw. He goes for a punch. Misses back. It comes now to Green. Green goes for a short pass. It's wide out the calorie there in the forward pocket. Little fella's in trouble. Down he goes. He, Collingwood trying to get it clear. Knocked out by White. Picked up by McCormack. Over to Ray Shaw. A short pass back here to Wilmo on his own. He's got plenty of time to do something with it as he drives the ball back out there towards the half forward line. Davis coming out now. They'll give a hand pass over. It's an easy one. Finally, it's picked up by Byrne. Byrne drives it over there towards centre half four, but there's no one there for Collingwood. And the due perusal gets clear nicely. A nice long kick looking out to the open space, but it's too long. It beats uh, Barry Breen, and the ball is out of bounds. I don't know where Barry Breen is doing out there on the wing because he must have chased, he possibly chased Davis up the ground. Ball back into play again. Punched out by Derek Shaw. Back it goes to Collingwood's Isle. He's grabbed it and hung the ball against him. Well, that's a funny one. Never even had it then. Picked up by Satori. Satori with a punt kick to centre half. for a chance for picking the mark. He does. And Bill gets his hands and you can't get him out because it's like a vice. A hand pass over to Magray. I know Bill Pickens seems to be getting rid of the ball much quicker today. Two up they go. There's a free kick, and I'd say it would go to Val Perovic at centre half back. Perovic with the free kick for St Kilda, and I certainly need a few more of those. And let's hope that they can lift their game too, because uh, potentially uh, this match had uh, a lot of things to offer, but it hasn't quite eventuated so far after that bit of dish up in the first quarter. Burned, first to get to it. Not a very good kick by the former Carlton winger. Back in towards Dunn to Duperuzel was better football from St Kilda. Duperuzel looking for a mark at centre half forward. Barker the man intended for. Pickens there also for Collingwood. Duperuzel again in the centre of the ground. A pass almost uh, brought in down there by Saru. Moore. His kick well smothered too by Bond. Bond's kick looking for Saru again, and he takes it right on the boundary line, and he'll get a 15-metre penalty too, I think. Or no, no. he's done quite good play on, Pete. Well, that must have been touched. Must have been touched. Bad luck for St Kilda. Ball's thrown in there. Disher in front of Moore. Ball knocked down to Barker. Barker has a snapshot in towards the goals. It's all Collingwood there, though, and, and uh, McCormack has uh, taken a very easy mark too, right on the edge of the goal square. Green standing on the mark. McCormack goes for a pass oh, out towards the back pocket. It. Not a good one because Gary McDonald takes it some 30 metres up and a chance to bring up St Kilda's second goal. It's the old addicts, Lou, never pass on the back line, and uh, how often we see that come unstuck. Many times, Pete. I must go along with you there, mate. McDonald, we haven't seen much of him since he moved to Victoria. I think he was out uh, a lot of last year through injury. That looks pretty good, too. St Kilda's second goal coming up at the five-minute mark of the second quarter. They move to 2-1-13, still trailing Collingwood, 7-9-51. Well, still the Collingwood run continued. As I mentioned, uh, they kicked seven goals in the first and six in the second. But possibly the best passage of play in so far as Collingwood was concerned was the opening ten minutes after half time. They kicked six goals in about the first ten minutes and the man instrumental for this was Peter Moore. He got about six or seven knockouts in a row from the ruck and on many occasions he punched the ball more than 20 or 30 metres. Let's go now to the first ten or so minutes of a very exciting third quarter, if you're a Collingwood supporter. The third quarter from Victoria Park. Let's see if St Kilda can do better. They're a better side than the score indicates, I'm sure. Moore trying to get the ball out. Barker tries to go through. And uh, St Kilda get the ball onto their forward line. That's a rarity. Sartori underneath it. There's a umpire has paid a free kick, though, to uh, Peter Moore, the Collingwood Ruckman, who was flattened in the first quarter. And Don Disher for St Kilda seemed to have his number taken. We won't know, of course, until after the game. Shocking kick by Moore. One of the rare mistakes that Collingwood have made so far today. And it's a St Kilda free kick to be taken by Barry Breen, who seems to be at centre half back on uh, Renee Kink. That's right. Calling for the ball is uh, side bottom, but Breen goes straight up the ground. That's where St Kilda have got to go. From the back, Terry White takes a very good mark. It's going to be a free kick anyway to Billy Pickin. Pickin with a hand pass over to Worthington. Worthington in turn out towards the centre wing position. And there's the Hulk himself, Renee Kink taking the mark and decides to go off he gets caught but maybe a little bit too high but he did take uh, some time to get rid of the ball the hand passes to uh, Ray Shaw and turn back to Kink 
kink over towards uh, Mike Wulno. Wulno's clear now, driving the Magpies deep into attack, looking for Davis in the goal square. It could have been a St Kilda mark there. A chance for Perovic. Perovic goes for a hand pass over to Baker. Baker in turn, a long hand pass, but it's intercepted by Stewart. Slow to get rid of it. Still Collingwood have the ball in their attacking zone and swinging round to have a shot. It's uh, a mark taken by side bottom. Who was that out there? I think it was Olsen that kicked that ball down. He's hurt his ankle too. Gee, that's all they're, I they're, need, isn't it? I reckon they're unfair to uh, side bottom. He's been... Did he? He hit, his, hit the fence with his shoulder. He's, he's been accused of things he hasn't been... Uh, well, he hasn't been anywhere near half the time, Pete. I've well, got a few others and killed the players too. He hasn't been turning <laughs> the ball. That's their problem. Kink, hand pass to Moore. He fires at the goals from 20 metres out and has brought up four points. That's Collingwood's 14th. They go to 14, 11, 95. St Kilda, 2, 5, 17. That came from uh, Dacos, incidentally, Pete, and uh, that kid has got a lot of football ability. Only 17 years of age, and as Tommy Hafey was telling me today that he's still got two years to go to play in the under-19s if he wishes, but, of course, they wouldn't let that kid down there now. And we can't really judge the board because the opposition's not so strong today. Up it goes now. Moore gets a long knockout, looking there for kick. He's got the drop on uh, Green at the moment. Now he's got the ball. Oh, he's lost it. He gave a hand pass over to Morris, who fires for the goals. And there's another one coming up. Oh, golly, talk about the lamb to the slaughter. By golly, that uh, it looks like the abattoirs here. There's Saints lying all over the place. All we need now is some firm. We'd be really in business. OK, 15-11, 101 points. Now, if this keeps on going, that, I feel sorry for one guy. I hope they pay him time and a half. That's that scoreboard attendant. He's wrapping the numbers up like nobody's business to 2 5 7 and We've only played three minutes and they've picked up two goals already. This is a pathetic performance by St Kilda. And don't get carried away with Collingwood's great form. They're playing well, I know that, but the opposition is woeful. Moore gets another one out. Down towards Rene Kink. He can't pick it up. They fumble the ball, St Kilda. There's Dacos falling on top of it, trying to knock it out. And Breen's battling hard. The umpire's going to ball it up at centre half forward about... Uh, 60 metres out from the Collingwood goal. St Kilda would wish this game was over now even. Up it goes. Knocked out by Moore again. Over to Byrne. They're back in business again. Up towards the full forward zone. And there's a mark to Davis. Oh, golly. He's going now for his uh, fourth goal. It's Stewart. I'm sorry. I thought it was Davis. He's going for his fourth goal. Who puts it matter? Whatever you say, he's going for their fourth goal. There it is, coming up now again, and Collingwood go to 16-11, 107. To St Kilda, 2-5, uh, uh, 17, and uh, I reckon there'd be a nice sort of a funeral tonight. I'd hate to be the comedian at the uh, St Kilda Social Club at their, uh, their dinner dance tonight. Actually, uh... How would you be cracking a gag there tonight, Pete? I would get a go. <laughs> Actually, we could be going for a league record score. It's early hours, you have to say that, but... Uh, remember that St Kilda were annihilated here by Collingwood in a practice match by about 20 odd goals, might have even been more. Let's see if uh, the Magpies can get that score today. That's about the end, the interest left in the match for mine. Here's Dacos, he's made a fine debut for the Magpies, a very good player in the making, and still qualifies for the under 19s. In fact, could play for them for about two years yet, I believe. There's Duperuzel for St Kilda, one of their better players. The umpire calls play on. Day 11 for the Saints, goes out towards the halfback flank, but the only player there is uh, Russell Olsen, and he takes a safe mark. He's at left half forward for Collingwood. A fair way from goal, I wouldn't think could score. In fact, he's gone for a short pass, and it is a good one. If, uh, yes, Rayburn takes the mark. Burn a short pass, looking for Kink. Oh, he messed that up. Got, they're going to sleep, Collingwood. They're getting too lackadaisical about this, I think. Morris gets the ball out. Still in Collingwood's attacking zone. A hand pass comes out in the direction of Worthington, who fires at the goals, and there's another one. He's playing down the back line. He's getting tired. The ball not coming down, so he's gone down with a ball. It's let me be, and this needs pop the goal through. Lou, four goals have been kicked by Collingwood in just over five minutes. And they go to 17-11, and uh, the score there is uh, 100. 13 points to St Kilda, 2 5 17. How is that worth it? Oh, he's gone back to his position down there in the back pocket now. I think it'll be Peter McCormack's turn to go up and have a go at it. He might as well. Okay, back to the centre now, waiting to see what happens. Up she goes. Knocked out by the big fellow again. He hasn't missed one this quarter. There's Burn and Collingwood race ahead again. They're standing still, St Kilda. Up it goes towards the full four. He's got the mark, Stewart, I'd say. I don't know about that. Yeah, he's paying it. Could have been a bit doubtful, but he's got the mark. And as I said before, when you're hot, you're hot. And when you're not, you're not. And that's certainly St Kilda. I'll tell you what, they're going to the 
They're just about at freezing point at the moment. He's going for his fifth goal now. Uh, Stewart and Collingwood's 18. Kick through. There we go. 18 goals, 11. 196 are ready to score out at the moment. This will be a good one for the big league tonight, Pete. The St Kilda 2-5. I'll tell you what, you'll have every Collingwood supporter in Australia watching this on the replay tonight because they think it was... Uh, well, you know, they I think they're pretty, uh, let's say they're a bit sadistic when it comes to their side, they're winning like this. Well, uh, you mentioned the big league, Lou. Some wag suggested that St Gilda lead the little league on at half time. See if they could have done any better. It's being a little bit harsh, but St Gilda outclassed at the moment today. Yeah. Moore, a 30 metre punch down the half forward. Duke Arousal couldn't handle the ball. Picked up by O'Keefe for St Gilda. And uh, ironical jeers because it goes on the St Gilda's forward line. There's Stan the man, gets scragged by Burns. Umpire said he made an attempt to get rid of it and calls play on. A good decision. Hand pass comes out to Worthington from Tony Shaw. Worthington in towards the centre. A chance for Satori. A bad hand pass as Green left him, or went a little bit too far. Burned down to Derek Shaw. To Kink was good football. Kink to Ray Shaw. Best man on the ground. He fires and he's missed it. Collingwood crowd are going mad because he missed it. Well, that's uh, about the first time that Collingwood have really missed for goal from close in. Shaw has still kicked three. And 18-12, 120, plays 2-5-17. Already 103 points the difference, and if somebody said that would be the case at this stage of the match at Victoria Park today, I think I would have called the police. However, it's going to be Dale Evans from full-back to... You'd bring gone for the green car, wouldn't you? <laughs> That's right, bring <laughs> the ball back into play. Evans, and there's uh, Disher, Disher over to Green. Green a hand pass, looking for Satori on the wing, over to Bond. Bond has a chance to go for a run. Only has the one bounce. Picking in ideal position. So too is Magro, but they both missed it. Burns there. McCormack there for Collingwood. It's kicked out to Worthington. Worthington goes... Uh, oh, well, no, he goes straight up the ground, but a missed kick. And it finds Morris O'Keefe a little short of centre-half forward. O'Keefe gone for a short pass. I think the uh, long kicking would have been better there. McDonald gets a smack over the chops, and he'll take the free kick for St Kilda at uh, centre-half forward. McDonald, some... Uh, 40 metres out from goal. I'm just checking on his kicks. He's had one so far for the day. One goal he's kicked, and kick-wise he's had four. Kick dropping short from McDonald, and uh, also offline. It's three, four, one behind, and that is St Kilda's first score for the quarter. And there's the Collingwood runner coming out to the Collingwood player that made the mistake. Gully, they're a bit severe. These coaches, they're never satisfied unless they win by 38 goals. Two six eighteen plays 18 12 120. Ball back into play again. Oh, good mark there to, uh, to uh, uh, Derek Shaw. Derek Shaw at half-back. Ball driven back there towards centre-half forward. A chance for St Kilda to mark. Pushed away. Oh, beaten them all this time. Here's Shaw going out. This is little Ray Shaw. A running shot for goal. It's good. It's right through the centre. And they've got 19 goals on the ball. Can they kick 30 and break whatever the record is? I don't know what it is. 19, 12, 126 points. To St Kilda, 2 6 18, and we're at the nine minute mark. Peter and our statisticians going through the record to see what it is, but by golly, they've got plenty of time. We've got nine minutes plus another 30 odd, uh, what have we got? Nearly, uh, nearly an hour to go to do this. They could easily do it at the rate they're going at the moment. Yeah, Footscray kicked it against St Kilda last year. St Kilda seem to be at the bottom of all these things when the records are broken, and the, their players must be terribly despondent now. Though I hope to see how the, think how their coach feels. Stuart Moore going again. Can he get this one? Now that knocked out by Disher, by Barker. And Barker gets it down towards that half four line. But there's Magro jugging the ball and taking it away again. And Collingwood going to attack up towards Morris. They're punched away. Good play by Morris. Down towards the forward pocket. Green going after it. He loses the ball. The umpire set a free kick against Burr. He wasn't, uh, didn't have the ball that time. He was grabbed. Out it goes. A chance over the head of the pack. Beats about five. Picked up now by uh, Green it is. Green drives it back towards Pickett and Saru. Ball punched away by the Collingwood defenders. There's uh, uh, McCormick having a bit of trouble. We're well bucked up by Magro. The ball back there now. Coming in there for Collingwood is uh, Davis already going off the mark. Driving it right up to the full forward zone. Can they mark it, Collingwood? There's a mark to uh, Shaw again. He's going for his sixth goal. Lou, the record score kicked by uh, Footscray against St Kilda, 33-15, 213. It's Stewart, I should say. I call him Short. Sure. Pete, I'm sorry, there's that many Shaws and Stewarts. Kicked by... Uh, no, he's missed that one. 
Come on, Pete, what were you saying? Well, I was saying, Lou, that uh, some children will uh, probably still have the distinction of having the highest league score kicked against them if the Magpies keep going. The Magpies have to kick 214 points to get there. They're well on the way to doing it. 19-13, 1-2-7, plays 2 6 18. And this would be uh, one of St Kilda's lowest scores for many years, I dare say. Totally outclassed at the moment at Victoria Park. Barker in front. Tony Shaw from behind, though, beats uh, also Kevin Morris to take a good mark. Tony Shaw, a hand pass, looking out there for Woolno. Woolno is well shepherded, but he's in trouble now. Still gets his kick in, in towards the, uh, the pocket. And uh, Evans races the ball over the line. We'll see a throw in to take place right in front of the players' race. Collingwood doing it easily. 19-13. They've already kicked six goals this quarter, and the quarter hasn't been going that long. A chance for another one here. Ray Shaw has a snapshot for goal, but I think that's over the line, and it'll be a penalty-free kick for St Kilda. It will be taken down there by Jeff Dunn. Down in the back pocket. And uh, St Kilda looking a very sick and sorry side at the moment. Renee Kink has marked some uh, 30 metres out from goal. The hand pass is to Derek Shaw, who lines them up and has put through another one to the Magpies. That's his first, and Collingwood go further ahead. Their 20th goal comes up at the 12-minute mark of the third quarter. 20 goals, 13, 133, leads St Kilda, 2-6, 18-6. Well, so much for the third quarter. Collingwood finishing up with eight goals in that term. And as we went into the final stages of the match, the only interest remaining in the game was to see if Collingwood could break that 213-point uh, barrier and become the highest-scoring team ever in the VFL. As we mentioned during the third quarter, that record held by Footscray. Collingwood needed 214 points, and they had a pretty good chance of doing it. Let's go now to the final ten minutes of the game out at Victoria Park. I wonder how often it's happened before that two teams on the same day have kicked a double ton against uh, the other side. The Collingwood Commodore Cup team did it when they annihilated the St Kilda side, and they look like doing it here in the first. Well, I've never heard of that before, Pete, but that just shows you the weakness of the St Kilda side because they've got no one to draw on from the reserves, and of course, when anyone gets injured, they can't uh, bring players in. The Commodore Cup score, incidentally, was Collingwood 33 24 to St Kilda 9 17. So they're our Commodore Cup team has done better than uh, the first 18 here today. They need 19 points, if my stats are correct, for the all-time record score. Barker runs into his own player, O'Keefe, and O'Keefe still can't pick it up himself. Now the Magpies do through Woolno. He gets it over to Worthington. Uh, not Worthington, but Wearmouth. Wearmouth over to Kink. He lines up the goals from 20 metres out, and there's another one. Four points to Collingwood. And... I'm sick of looking at the scoreboard. It's 30 goals, Collingwood, 21, 201 points to St Kilda, 310, 28. Now they need 13 points, don't they, Pete, to break the record? They need 13 points, Lou, yes, that's uh, how I see it. 13 points to break the record. The highest score ever kicked in the history of league football, and Collingwood are heading that way, and Paul Al St Kilda, 310 to, to uh, 29, uh, 21. We'll wait now for that centre bounce. Peter Moore at the centre bounce. The ball's lost again. That's the third for the day. No, it's back to you. They've found it. They've got two balls out in the centre. Pick the five. 30 goals. That's right. 30 goals, 21. Uh, 201 to St Kilda. Three goals, uh, 10. 28. Even the scoreboard at 10. It was a bit but He had 39 goals up. He was anticipating a tremendous record. 13 points to go to break the record. Can the Magpies, the crowd sensing this at the moment, Knocked out back there towards centre-half forward. Grabbed by McDonald. Oh, there, down he goes. He was collared. And the umpire set a free kick against him. Hand pass coming over now. As Betts is on the ground. Down towards that forward line. Renee Kink going for He's got the mark. And how many goals he kicked now, Renee Kink? Six goals. And the incredible Hawks got the chance to make the difference. Only seven points. Lou, if Collingwood win today, their percentage should take them round about uh, Hawthorne at third or above. That's not bad from last. I'll say it's not. But by golly, I've never seen such weak opposition in all my life. I reckon the Little League could have done better than the St Kilda side. The kick by Kink. It's too far around, and it'll be hit the behind post, and it'll be one out of throw in from the oh no, penalty free kick down there to St Kilda. So the score is still 30, 30 goals, 21, 201 Collingwood, and that is certainly a mouthful of figures to St Kilda, 310, 28. But by Morris. Morris gets it back over to Moore. Moore fires the ball up towards the full forward zone. Another chance for Kink here. Or two Collingwood play players spoil each other. Kink gets grabbed. The umpire calls play on. And I think we'll see a ball up here at centre-half forward for Collingwood. Bad luck for Collingwood then. I 
can't blame the players because they had the sun in their eyes and it's pretty difficult to see each other, but I guess they should have spoken to each other uh, when they're that close together. Duperuzel couldn't handle the ball. It uh, gives the chance to Cromingwood's Dacos, was it? He couldn't do much with it. Duperuzel gets it over to Barker and the Saints out of danger for the time being. Barker's kick up towards the centre wing position. Pickin has it on a string for the Magpies. He's gone for a pass over to Moore. And Peter Moore for a big fellow showing plenty of pace. Cleverly keeps it in play over to Wearmouth. Wearmouth has hand passes over to Pickin, who gets tackled by Cavalry. He in turn drops the ball and it's going to be a free kick to St Kilda to be taken by their little rover Paul Cavalry. Cavalry had a quiet day. And again, a few teammates have been in the same position. McDonald takes a fine mark, low down. Back to Cavalry. A hurried kick up towards the half-forward line. It's all Collingwood down there, but a chance for Gary Sidebottom to pick it up. Sidebottom over to Barker. Barker in turn back towards the goal square. It's right across there, and Worthington has no trouble getting away from Disher. He gets it over to Will Nail. The Collingwood crowd roar. They sense another goal might be coming up. Here's Kink in front of Breen, looking for a free kick. He punched the ball away. Green backs up well, but he's got plenty of opposition there. Well played, Barry Breen, but he couldn't take the ball with him. Morris goes over, and the free kick will be going against Morris, and it will be taken by the St Kilda skipper, Barry Breen. Good decision by the umpires. Breen can't make up his mind. He goes for a hand pass to Saru, who has hardly touched the ball. He can't, he, yeah, it's against him. My golly, he can't do it. The thing right. That fellow's gone back in his play. Looked like being a world champion. Two out it goes there towards Derek Shaw over the back. Chance now for Morris, he fumbles, he's got a chance to pick it up. Goes out, got one in the back, the umpire still called play and it's picked up by Dunn. A hand pass to Saru again, he's grabbed it, he's clear this time as he drives the ball out towards that uh, half full. Oh, good mark there to Betts, beautiful mark. Collingwood only need 13 points to break the record. Oh, hand pass coming out and pick and drives it up there to the full forward zone. Can Stewart mark it? And a good mark for the boy at the back, Evans. Collingwood, 201 points. To St Kilda, 28, and Collingwood have played door. They've played 26 minutes of this quarter. Up towards Moore, and we got this. He's got the mark. Here we go for the long kick. As I said before, 13 points to go to break the record, and there'd be about four minutes to go of this game, I would say. It might be a bit more too, Lou. Might be a little bit more because the uh, rate of scoring of Collingwood certainly make the quarter a lot longer. Waiting now for the kick by Moore. It's well up there to the goal square. It's in the goal square. Ball pushed down, grabbed here by Green. He's grabbed. Holding the ball, there's a chance to make the difference, only seven points now. And the free kick to go to, uh, to Davis, and Davis has already kicked uh, five goals. Rene Kink has kicked six, and even the two backmen there, Worthington kicked one, so did White from the half-back line, so it's been all over the place. The shot, it's through. Well, they bumped each other's heads, those two, and he kicked the ball. Davis and the uh, other player, Green. He's got a nasty eye. Yeah, he ran right into him. Either one's fault. OK, we see uh, Collingwood go to 31-21, 207. They need uh, seven, points, seven points to break the record. And they've got about four minutes to do it. To St Kilda, 3-10-28. Can the Magpies break the record? The highest score in the history of uh, league football, 213 points. Well, that's the only excitement left in the match here. And naturally, all the yelling was coming from Collingwood supporters. And what a magnificent percentage booster this is going to be from Collingwood. From last, they'll possibly go up to round about third. And uh, not often that happens in league football, even so early in the season. Here we go, underway. Collingwood needing seven points, so a goal in the behind would give them the record score. Picking from half-back. Kick smothered. St Kilda through Barker go forward. Barker from left half-forward fires the ball deep in towards the goal square. Side-bottom from behind. Tries to claim the mark. Bond gives it back to side-bottom. The hand pass is not a good one. Too high. They're going away from goals, the Saints. Barker, another chance, but he's hotly pursued by Magro out there. Barker spins around and fires the ball deep back into the goals, and it might be through, is it, or is it a mark? Mark to Worthington. He's got it. Worthington goes for a hand pass. Looking out there for Olsen, who takes it on the run. Olsen, in turn, goes up towards the half-back line, and Stan Magro takes it, thinking about playing on the crowd roar. They want to get this record here at Collingwood to put them into the record books, and getting up high was uh, Derek Shaw. Play on. Picked up by Cavalry. Cavalry a high kick. Doesn't cover that much distance at all. Picking from behind has the run. Couldn't take the mark. Still a chance for Collingwood here is Magro. He goes for a hand pass to Worthington. Now the Magpies are going to come down this wing. Kevin Worthington has a couple of bounces. There's no St Kilda player near him. Drives the ball long up towards the right half forward zone. And Jeff Dunn coming out from the back pocket takes a very, very safe mark. And he'll get a 15 metre penalty. 28 minutes gone now in the quarter. As Dunn decides to play on straight away. 
Dunn up towards the centre half forward position and a fine mark rock down there by the Collingwood skipper Ray Shaw. Best on the ground for mine, although he's got plenty of opposition and they're all in black and white Guernseys. Pickens kick towards half forward for Collingwood. They want set seven points, but here's Dunn again and taking yet another mark at the quarter of the square. Good play by Dunn, one of the very few players they've had all day. Battled very hard this boy. Ball back there towards the centre half forward position. There's Disha dropping the centre. Gully, he can't do a thing right now. Trevor Barker's got it. Trying to get it up there to the full forward zone. There's no doubt down there is a nice mark to uh, Worden. It looks as though well, he is injured badly. That's uh, side bottom. Hardly been sighted out there. Nipping badly down there on the forward line. Over it goes now to Woolmo. And they're clear. They only need seven points to break the record. After Rene Kink. And the Hawks got it. He gives a hand pass back. It's a bit long. Derek Shaw's got a chance to drive it down there towards the full forward zone. But once again, Dunn's in the way. By golly, he stood up well. He hasn't uh, even faltered at all, that fella down there in the back pocket. A bad kick. Going out it now is Gerald Betts, punched away nicely by Satori. Time running out for Magpies to break the record. Dish has got it there and gets the raspberry from the Collingwood crowd because he was in a mix-up there with uh, Moore. The ball down on the ground. Magro's backing up well. Finally, McCormick is developed into a very good full-back. He's clear now, taking it around that uh, half-back line. Of course, the Collingwood players wouldn't know about the record. I'm quite sure of that. Out it goes wide. And a mark taken there by Olsen up there on the wing position. I think they'd have a pretty good idea, Luke. Well, I think they'd start to sense it now by the way the crowd's going. That's a shocking kick and it's out of bounds. And I think the time may beat the Collingwood side because we're at the 30-minute mark and they still need seven points to break the record. Goldman are behind, needed. 30 minutes gone of the final quarter, so maybe a minute at, at the outside. Uh, two minutes left in the match. Ball back into play now with that kick by St Kilda. And Cavalry can't do much right because he missed it also. And it'll be thrown back into play on the St Kilda left half forward flank as the shadows creep across the Victoria Park ground. A day that St Kilda will want to forget very, very quickly. Although I don't think they'll be allowed to by their coach. Picked up by Tony Shaw. His hand pass mothered and intercepted well by Trevor Barker. Barker's kick intended for uh, side bottom. who's still resting down there in the pocket. McCormack will beat him to it and then take the next to rush the ball through for a behind. About the only way St Kilda would score, I think. Well, they haven't scored a goal for the quarter, Pete. No, and only three for the match. 3 11 29 St Kilda. Collingwood 31 21 207. That's a mouthful of figures, isn't it? Worthington from left half back. Oh, beautiful torpedo punt kick. Run up over the centre. Burns in there for St Kilda. He's opposite number Gerald Betts, but Collingwood had it though. But here's the Hulk. Kink from left half forward. Plenty of distance in that kick too. Peter Moore has the set. There's the siren. They won't get the record, but it's their highest ever score against St Kilda anyway. A magnificent percentage booster. The final score at Victoria Park. The Massacre of Collingwood. The Massacre at uh, Victoria Park at St Kilda. 31-21, 207. St Kilda, 3-11, 29. Well... Yes, it's a day St Kilda would like to forget, but I'm sure Mike Patterson will have other ideas for the St Kilda players on the training track this week. 